Hi everybody and welcome to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. Um, today I'm going to do a video as per request I had by someone at one point on um, how I clean my airbrush. Now there's a million uh, videos out there on how people clean airbrushes and generally they're all the same but some people do some things a little bit different and so on. So you know it's I'm not doing anything that's unique here. Uh, or groundbreaking. I'm just doing this. Maybe I have some viewers that haven't seen a video on it yet. So um, right here is the uh, materials that I'm going to use. <clears throat> uh, I've got me a little bowl with just a little bit of water in it. I've got some lacquer thinner, a little um, mixing cup here for soaking parts, a uh, paper towel. I've got my cleaning pot here. Uh, and then I've got this uh, a couple of um, Q-tips, an old ultra cheap testers brush that I use for cleaning, obviously my airbrush, paper towel, paper towel here to do the work on. And then I have this cleaning kit here. It's not necessary, uh, but um, there are some useful things in it. So uh, let me get this stuff shuffled around and we'll get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it apart. Now, I do the pretty much the same thing for all of my airbrushes, um, regardless of the brand, because they're generally the same kind of setup. Um, now, this one's single action, but there's not a whole lot of difference between the single action and the double action as far as taking it apart. Um, on mine, um, take the uh, needle out and as you can see there's some crud on there but I just had a pretty extensive uh, priming and painting exercise so take the needle out in this case it's all one piece but some of them you unscrew and then pull the needle out um, but I'm mainly just showing how I clean it so then I take off the protective cap here I take off this part here and then on this particular um, airbrush, the Iwatas, they, they have this cool little wrench that fits the tip. Now, you'll hear horror stories of like, well, I've messed it up or I've stripped it out or cross-threaded it. All it takes is just a very little bit of care and you can keep from um, messing it up. I, I've done this countless times and I haven't managed to damage anything yet. But it fits on there, and this tool is handy just because it fits it so well. If if you don't have that tool, you can do it with a very small wrench. I wouldn't recommend pliers just because you can't get a nice flat uh, grab on it. And this tool here, um, it actually came uh, in this kit, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But uh, then I take, so I take the nozzle off like that. All right, um, this you don't have to take off, but you know, it doesn't hurt. So then what I do is I put the parts in um, this uh, little thing here, and then I just fill it full of, well not full, but put enough to cover the parts uh, with lacquer thinner. Now, as far as cleaners go, um, there are a lot of different, I mean, if you're using lacquer-based paints, you'll definitely want to use a lacquer thinner uh, or, you know, a cleaner. Um, acrylics, you know, they make, you know, each brand has their own cleaner. Uh, some people make home brews, all this kind of stuff. I used to have uh, cleaners according to the brand of paint I was using, but I've discovered the lacquer thinner will work on any of the paints. So I can save myself a lot of money by buying myself a quart can of lacquer thinner from the hardware store for really cheap compared to uh, getting um, different, uh, different brands of cleaners that are specific uh, to a particular brand of, you know, uh, paint or whatever Lacquer thinner is the only cleaner The only thinner that I use to clean my airbrush. That's it and it works on all types of paints. It dissolves it all So anyway, uh, we'll let the parts soak here for a second and uh, 
while while that is soaking i'll talk a little bit about some of the more particular cleaning tools that i have now in this uh set that i got you basically get um uh came with some of these some of these dental cleaners uh, a couple of them i think uh comes with some lube um comes with some pipe cleaners some wipes and this cool little uh i spilled something on it cool little um device for magnification so you can you know really check out you know like you can look for damage on this you can look at the other parts to make sure they're clean um i haven't really used it a lot but you know it is pretty handy i have used it at times so there's that um so that's what comes in the kit and then i bought some extra uh dental uh brush cleaners um, interdental brushes because they're handy and then i also got some uh paper points i bought these online very cheap and they're just what they say they're paper points and i guess they're used a lot for uh, uh, uh dentists use them a lot and they come in different sizes i got the multi-pack to see what would work and they all work pretty good and i'll show you how i use them here in a minute so those are the uh actual tools that i use to clean with so the first thing I'm going to do is I take uh, one of these inter interdental cleaners and then I get some uh, lacquer thinner on it. And then I always try and keep my airbrush pointed down because you don't want the whatever you're using to clean it to go back this way. You don't want to clean like that. So I keep it pointed down and then I just use it to clean this channel out here. And as you can see, it comes out pretty cruddy looking. So I wiped the majority of it off. Now, mind you, this is after a lot of uh, painting sessions. And with just, you know, cleaning after every few, you know, colors. See, a lot of gummed up stuff. Now, the gummed up stuff, you're going to get mostly from uh, acrylics. Uh, Vallejo, um, Steinal Res Primer, Vallejo Primer, anything that's a water-based acrylic, you're going to get some rubbery, goopy globs. So you can see inside of there the, uh, the brush. And I just keep doing that until it comes out almost totally clear. I blot it on here and as you can see it's gotten progressively lighter which means it's getting cleaner with every pass and then I'll take one that's fairly clean check it out it's not really clean so let me grab another one here one that truly is clean and see what we got so that's pretty clean right there so let's and so that's that channel right there's that uh, right there is really clean so that's good to go then I'll take it and I'll kind of go around the threads make sure there's no dried up paint on there use my paper towel to kind of wipe the threads down see there's a little bit on there I want to keep that clean because that's you know pretty important to keep that seal cleaned up so there's that then i'll take a uh, q-tip or cotton swab whatever you want to call it and get make sure there's no particulate stuff going on inside of that now the next thing i do is write down let me see if i can show you here And you always want to be really careful with the tip of your um, needle. Okay, where that comes out right there, right down in here at the back of the, um, the bowl, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 
and I'm gonna clean up inside of there because paint will get up in there. Now you're really gonna have a problem with paint getting up in there if you do the whole back flushing thing. See that? That is atrocious. And that'll really crud up. Now, this isn't long enough to get back and mess with that Teflon seal. So, because there's a Teflon seal inside of here that seals around the, uh, the needle. See, that is really nasty. But see, I've, I've done quite a few um, paint sessions with this thing since I cleaned it last. And you'll find that when you're um, you know your airbrush will be working pretty good but the minute you get this thing all nice and deep cleaned you're going to notice a huge difference in your uh, in how your airbrush works hopefully you guys can see down in there it's just Okay, so that's looking pretty good. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my bowl of water here. I'm going to squirt a little bit of that in there like that. Take my Q-tip, get out any debris as much as I can. These bottles, um, Oh man, I can't remember the name of the group now. Grumpy Old Scale Modelers or something like that. The guy who runs that web page or uh, Facebook page and YouTube channel, he hipped me to those bottles and they're great. They work really well. So if you can find some, I got them on Amazon. They're cheap. All right, so that's clean. That's clean enough for now because we're going to be running some more stuff through it here in a little bit. Okay, so that part's done. So the next part we can do are these parts in here. So let's do the protective cap first. Shouldn't have too much of a problem cleaning this. I mean, it doesn't really generally get that, that dirty. And I'm really careful about cleaning it up and keeping it cleaned up on the inside um, after every session so we got that then let's do this one here same thing I'm just gonna run it through the, the hole in the end of this part here run it around the threads generally I wear gloves I don't know why I'm not wearing gloves this time I'm being a knucklehead okay so there's that the nice thing about the lacquer thinner is once you've got most of it wiped off, it, it evaporates super quick. All right, now the last part I'm going to clean is going to be that little nozzle. And this is where the paper points come in handy. So I'm going to drop that in there and let it start soaking up a bit. I'm going to carefully get the nozzle tip out. I'm going to take this paper point. See, it's small enough that it fits through. And you can really get that thing cleaned out. See how dirty that is? So there's that one. Because they're paper, they just suck that. Uh, lacquer thinner right up so look at that nice and clean so that is pretty much done now keep in mind that if you use lacquers mostly as opposed to uh, using uh, water-based acrylics it's gonna make it that much easier to clean this stuff because it's just the nature of it um, The uh, acrylics really do a nice job of um, 
or the uh, lacquer thinner does a really good job of dissolving lacquer based paints or um, solvent based paints, solvent based acrylics like uh, Tamiya. All right, so screwing this back on here is not that big a deal. It's very easy, just don't cross thread it. And when you tighten it on there, you only need to get it snug, you don't need to crank it down. Okay, so that's on there. Now, what I like to do is take a little bit of this um, lube and put it on the threads. Just a, just a drop is all you need. When you screw this on, it's going to spread it all around those threads. It'll just give you a nice good seal. Tighten that on there. Um, do a little bit more on there, on here. It's not really necessary because I take the uh, I take the um, protector off sometimes depending on what paint job I'm doing. Screw that into place. Put this back in, making sure that the hole here is in line with the front like that. Okay. So then the next thing all I need to do is using my leftover lacquer thinner is just clean this uh, needle up really good. Now some people like to put thinner or um, some uh, airbrush lube on their Um, on their uh, needle. Um, I don't know if it's really necessary. I mean, some people recommend, I think uh, Schofelt, I think his name is, the guy who uh, runs Badger. I think he does, and I do sometimes. Sometimes I don't remember, but, you know, it's never hurt anything. But it's also never hurt anything that, you know, whenever I forget to uh, to, get, to put it on there. So, I don't know. I do sometimes, sometimes I don't. So then, put the needle back in there. Screw it down. And uh, I'm ready to blow some thinner through it. Okay, so I just squirt a little bit in there, like that. And all this is going to do is blow any remaining particulates out. Now, I use, this is a Sparmax um, cleaning pot. Uh, it's more designed for a regular traditional double action type brush. Uh, this one will fit, but I can't get it all the way down on there. To uh, So I have to remove this. This is rubber here, so it creates kind of a seal. This is a filter here that keeps any junk from flying up. And all I do is just... Uh, Run that through there, and it'll blow any remaining teeny tiny particles out. And there you go. Nice, clean, ready-to-go airbrush. And the next time I use it, I'm just going to be so stoked that it's working so well. So, that is how I clean my airbrush. So, as I said, uh, you know, everybody has their own way of doing things, and um, generally it's all going to be about the same. You know, some people will only run, f you know, um, the uh, cleaner. Sorry about the shaky camera there, folks. Uh, they'll only run the cleaner through it. They won't really take it apart or you know whatever there's some people that um like to use as little uh cleaners and thinners as possible and you know it's like you know they'll say things like it only takes a thimble full to clean your airbrush blah blah and that may be so but to me um i've been using the same quart of lacquer thinner for well over a year probably close to two years and uh you know, it's cheap insurance to keep this thing sparkling clean all the time. Um, 
I generally do a full a full strip down um, clean up after depending on the type of model I'm building if I'm doing a lot of color changes um, I will you know just run cleaner through it make sure the bowls cleaned out and make sure everything is all wiped down really good and just continue on and then once I'm done with the kit I'll break it down just like I did to get the whole thing really sparkling clean um, if it's a long drawn out project uh, and most often times since I do use you know acrylic a water-based acrylic um, primer uh, after I do the primer uh, if I'm do if I'm priming the whole thing at once I will clean the primer uh, or I'll, I'll clean the airbrush after I do the primer just because of the nature of this stuff and the way it kind of glazes over and I think I'm going to do a video at some point on how uh, water-based acrylics behave differently than um, say solvent-based paints it's not going to be you know saying one is better than the other it's just going to show some things that uh, how they act differently as far as the way they dry and cure and all that kind of stuff so Anyway, that's how I clean my airbrush. Um, I can't remember who asked me to, to post it, but there you have it. I hope it was helpful. And as you can see, it didn't take very long to do it. Uh, I could have got it done a whole lot quicker if I wasn't blabbing, you know, boring you guys with all my commentary. But it doesn't take long. Keep your airbrush running really good, and you won't have any problems with uh, your paint jobs getting messed up on your uh, on your kit so hopefully it was helpful if you guys have any questions or comments uh further clarification on anything or uh, even some hints and tips i'd appreciate it if you'd put them in the comments section down below so as always thanks for joining me here on plastic models by a regular dude and i will see you all next time